In Canberra today, the nation's politicians remembered Gough Whitlam as a man of conviction, but a flawed one. Political correspondent Sabra Lane reports. If you can say that what he did... He was the nation's 21st Prime Minister. His admirers say it was appropriate as Gough Whitlam's election marked a nation's coming of age. Gough wanted Australia to be Australia, in Australia and on the world stage. And that, I think, is a good thing, and I wish more people had similar views today. In Canberra, scheduled parliamentary business, including committee hearings, were postponed for the day as a mark of respect, and at Tony Abbott's request, flags were lowered to half-mast. Gough Whitlam redefined our country, and in doing so, he changed the lives of a generation and generations to come. Under Gough Whitlam's gaze, the modern-day Labor parliamentary wing paused for a minute's silence this morning to remember. Gough's was a truly Australian life and a life lived truly for Australia. Be it in uniform or in Parliament, in the Prime Ministership and around the world. In the ALP, Whitlam's revered as an icon, credited with modernising the party and leading it to the government benches after 23 years in opposition. This is the most difficult speech I have made and will ever make. Have you seen that before? No, I haven't. In the current caucus, none was as close to the former PM as honorary party historian, Senator John Faulkner. The duo made a TV documentary, which was nominated for a Logie Award. About a month or two before the ceremony, they tell you you're not going to win it. <laughs> Goff was crestfallen for at least five seconds <laughs> and said to me, Comrade, I suppose an Academy Award is out of the question. <laughs> I call the Honourable the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister noted most MPs have their own Whitlam story. I introduced myself to him one day in 1978 at an event at Sydney University. I've heard of you, he said. You're some kind of a Liberal. <laughs> I'm actually supposed to be DLP, was my response. DLP, he boomed. That's even worse. <laughs> He had an explosive temper, the sort of temper that would uh, literally uh, uh, fly off in a moment and leave somebody devastated, whereas Whitlam would walk off wondering why that person was still upset half an hour later. So those were not good people management skills, and he relied on others to be able to carry that for him. Jenny Hocking wrote a two-volume biography about the former Prime Minister. Keating had a memorable phrase about the Whitlam caucus as being like a basket case. Um, and I think it was unwieldy, it was difficult. Whitlam wasn't a good people manager. Um, that became very clear to me in our interviews. The Whitlam government established diplomatic ties with China ahead of the United States. It abolished conscription, introduced no-fault divorce, universal health care, Aboriginal land rights and abolished university fees. Policies considered radical in their time, now viewed as mainstream. Gough Whitlam was a public servant, not a perfect servant. But Australia is unquestionably a better place, a fairer place, a more modern place, a more progressive place, because he lived. I think the basic idea of universality, of access on the basis of ability to higher education, universality of health care, I think they're pretty well embedded in the Australian psyche. Thank you, Gough Whitlam. Whitlam is both loved and loathed. In a hurry to bring about a raft of major policy change, Whitlam didn't keep as close an eye on his Treasury and his ministers as he should have. His government's expansionary monetary policy fuelled inflation. Combined with the oil price shocks of the 70s and the loans and morosi affairs, it led Malcolm Fraser to block supply in the Senate and Sir John Kerr's unprecedented decision to dismiss the government. A month later, the coalition swept to office in a landslide. People were scared of the pace of change. People were scared of the scale of change. People were used to a very stable, quiet Australia chugging along, living off the sheep's back. Quite a nice place, but very quiet, not dynamic. And I think uh, some people just were overwhelmed and scared and said, we don't want that. We want a nice, quiet existence. Thank you.
and so they became hostile to him. And of course it was a turbulent government. Many mistakes were made. The man who took over as caretaker Prime Minister says his old enemy had another choice. He could have called an election. Gough could have. And in some ways I wish he had gone to that election as Prime Minister. Um, but he didn't choose that path. He wanted a different path. And that's what uh, I think made it ultimately so controversial and it became a difficult time for everyone. Malcolm's to the left of me. No, I'm on the right of you. After both men left Parliament, they formed a friendship. I think it's a, a good thing for our political circumstances. I think it's a good thing for Australians to know that people who have been very strong political foes can in fact develop a quite close personal friendship. Liberal Philip Ruddock is the only serving MP from that era still in Parliament. He lists some of Whitlam's legacies. As I look back, um, I think the removal of discrimination against women, the recognition uh, of the needs of our Indigenous Australians, um, the issues in relation to 18-year-olds being able to vote. Um, if you go through uh, the family law reforms, um, the establishment of Medibank, if they'd been introduced over a longer period of time, we probably wouldn't have seen the events of 1975. Tonight, the current class of Labor MPs made a pilgrimage from the new to the old house in the sight of that dismissal speech. There were tears and tributes remembering the legacy left behind after 50 years in the public eye.